helicopter just went through with full searchlights on. So I don't know what they're looking for. It's gonna be such a cold night. I hope they find them because this is not the night to be out and lost in the open. it's about 10 o'clock and I've called it for 10 so not really successful today oh geez that smoke um not really successful for today I still have one big honking log in there the helicopter I can still hear it way off in the distance um which is probably not a good sign because I think if they would have found whoever it was um, I would think that I wouldn't be still hearing it. And, um, like it sort of sounded like they, they circled around in the near area and couldn't find the people. And so they moved off to a different search area, but I don't know that for sure. Um, and wow, it's really quiet here tonight. <laughs> like last, the last couple of nights there were people with like huge fires going on campfires and I see somebody's got a light on in their tent but otherwise it's like dead and it's freezing cold it's um quarter past 11 so it's almost two hours since I first saw that helicopter and I can still hear it passing back and forth way off in the distance so this is really really bad news it's freezing I'm in my minus five degree sleeping bag so i'm comfy cozy but getting into the sleeping bag was crazy freezing so whoever's out there i pray that they find them because this like i said this is not the night to be lost out in the park so i will try to get an update in the morning and uh, in the meantime i'm going to bed so it is freezing and that's the worst part is getting out of your sleeping bag and into your clothes because man it's just freezing. We'll go find out how cold it was but I don't think it was that cold in the end as they said but, but it was cold. Um, it was about 6 degrees when I checked last before I went to bed um, which was about the same that it was the first two nights and <laughs> It felt colder, but I'm not sure that it was that much colder. It might have gotten colder during the night, but that's my setup for my shoes. I am not getting another snail in my shoes. You know, I don't even mind if I get a scorpion in my shoes, but a snail, that was so gross. And do you know how long it took for it to get into my shoe in the first place? Ah. It was so gross and it left this like slimy mark thing in my shoes. Scorpion any day. It might give me the fright of my life, but it's not going to leave slimy gook in my shoes. Yeah. So anyways, that was my solution for last night. It didn't rain in the end last night, so that was good. Um, but I think that's what I'll be doing from now on out. <laughs> Time to get out of my tent. It's definitely cold out here. I had to even put the uh, ear warmers on. Let me see. But it's not even that cold. According to this little guy, who is probably not all that accurate because he has like seven or eight things on him. There's a compass. Not sure how accurate that would be. A safety whistle. There's a mag uh, magnifying glass. There's a light which is apparently out of battery. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm not quite sure how accurate this four degrees is because, or three degrees maybe, because it's freezing out here. Um, this is the first morning I've had to put this thing over my head and I'm gonna have to put my gloves on because my fingers are gonna freeze. But anyways, so,
the results of my ember tending last night. So there's a, these two chunks here are a little bit bigger than I'd like them to be. But uh, otherwise not bad, especially for the looks of that last log at the end, towards the end there. It wasn't looking good. So, success. <laughs> Anyways, now it's breakfast time. And then what I might do today, it is freezing. So I should probably get out on the trails. My only fear is that, really, I wanted to take you on the beaver pond trail. But that is going to be a mess after all this rain. So maybe just to get me moving, I might take you on the logging museum trail. That's going to be really interesting. Oh, and look. Can you see it? There's a moon. <laughs> I guess you can't really see it. Um, yeah, so last night I did see stars. They kept kind of coming and going, and as the weather sort of continued the same way as it was all day yesterday, the stars were absolutely beautiful, as always, when I could see them. <laughs> and uh, then the clouds would cloud them out. Um, I'm going to have my breakfast, then I'm going to head to the office and find out what the deal was with that search yesterday. So hopefully they found those people because, man, um, hopefully they found them alive because that without the proper gear to be lost in these woods last night would not have been a good thing. All right, so I actually have some time today to do something other than just chores. And uh, I'm going to check out some of the shorter trails because of a couple of reasons. One, I don't want to get caught in the rain. Two, I don't want to get too far in and find myself. I have to turn around because it's too muddy and I have to come back. And three, because it's cold. So I can do a little bit of a little bit of a trail and then come back to the car and then do another trail. That's the plan. So starting with the logging museum. Um, it's an outdoor museum and I don't know Oh, it looks like it's actually open. I wasn't sure if it was going to be inside, if the inside was going to be open because of COVID. But it looks like it is, but we're just going to go and check out the, uh, the trail. So it's kind of an outdoor trail. Um, it, or sorry, outdoor museum. And it's got, got all kinds of exhibits about logging in Northern Ontario over the, the I guess, couple centuries by now. And um, so normally in, oh, they do have guides. Okay, so you can take, they have these guides at the beginning of each trail. You can take a guide and then return it after you're done. And or you can put two bucks in this little thingy to, um, to keep it. And uh, otherwise you, uh, you put the unwanted ones in this little box here once you're done with it. And um, it tells you all about the trail. There's little signposts, number posts that are points of interest along the trail. And you can find out all about it in the book. And um, so we're going to go check it out. <laughs> 52 men would have lived in a cabin like this for the, uh, for the winter. And that is the kitchen. <laughs> And then they would have stored supplies. Like I think they stored flour in a big box like this. Bread box. They're calling it a bread box. Can't see much in there. It's, it's really dark in here and I just screwed that up. <laughs> Oops. Okay. There we go. I hope the mice don't get in there. Would you like the top bunk or the lower bunk? 
and this would have been where they kept their horses. So let's go take a look. Two horses per stall. So you could have fit eight horses in this cabin. Those are some crazy logs. You wouldn't find logs this size in the park anymore these days, probably. But uh, it's also incredible how they like hewed these logs, huge pieces of timber, with just an axe. And I'll show you what kind of axe, too. What kind of axe? Those guys were pretty skillful and I don't envy them that life at all. That would have been a hard life. So they would use these things to ice the roads, to plow the roads and then to ice them. So that's an icer. It would be full, the bucket on top there, or like that container there would be full of water and they would ice the roads so that they could slide the lumber along the roads and it would make it easier to transport than having to just drag it along the road. And that is a kind of a winch and pulley system to drag the logs up and down hills. Trying to make life easier on their horses. I say it's been raining. This lake does not normally come all the way up here. It has been raining so much. It's normally out to like about there somewhere, the edge of the lake from what I can remember when I've been here before. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I can get around it, so I'll go up here and see what we've got up here. So this was a kind of um, it's called an alligator and it's a machine that they would use to drag piles of lumber across the lakes, I guess. I didn't read the info, so here, I can be the captain of my own ship. And then you can see out the window, see where you're going. Um, wow. That was a hard, hard life back then. I would not, especially, especially sleeping in like freezing temperatures last night, I would not want to have lived that life. I'm quite grateful and appreciative of my creature comforts, even if I do occasionally venture out into this kind of territory. Yeah, so the alligator made it easier to move the logs across lakes than horses. Then you didn't need to have the lake frozen over to pull the, to have the horses pull the, the logs across the lake. Um, you could do it during the summer with the alligator. That's the back.
I say it was a hard life. It was a really hard life back then. And you can sit and take a rest on the bench. It's not a long trail at all. It's, I think, about a kilometer and a half. And it has all these exhibits on it. But it's so cold that I don't think I've ever walked this trail this quickly. Because I'm also not looking at the guide. I'm just walking the trail. So... Okay, so this is another horse stable. This one could handle 12. So this is the blacksmith's cabin. So this is the saw log camp and unlike that first um, cabin that we that we looked at um, this one that was in the 1800s this one's from sort of the 1940s so my great-grandfather actually worked as a chef in one of these logging camps in the 20s and 30s so this one is probably a lot more like the kind of camp that he would have been at and that is probably the dinner bell that he would have rung to call the loggers for dinner time. And look at that, the kitchen looks much better than the uh, the other one. That looks like that's the bread box back at the back there. Oh, it even has a pantry. And a stove. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to say that's the bread box. Ooh, it ha even has a sink. Look at that. Wow, this is like the height of luxury. And that's where they would have kept their firewood. The wood burning stove. So we really are moving up in the world. Look at these bunks. Much nicer than the other ones. And you don't have to smell of food every time that you're trying to sleep. So this cabin here um, houses a whole different sort of winch and pulley system to pull the logs uphill. So that's your mechanism right there and it pulls a cable which goes down to those logs down there and you can watch the logs as they come up the hill or as you I guess you wouldn't slide them down the hill unless it was snowed and iced over but you can keep an eye on them and unlike all those poor horses that had to do all the work before now you just do the work here, operating your winch and pulley system, which looks like it operated on steam. Now we're really look, moving up in the world, logging truck to pull the logs along.